What's going on guys, Christian here from CK Raps. So today I'm gonna to talk about five mistakes that beginners usually make when they're learning how to rap or in the early stages of rapping. Uh, these mistakes are hand placement, squeegee pressure, overstretching the film, stretching the film to the edge and leaving too much film around your edges and corners. Uh, these are very common mistakes that I see frequently throughout workshops and here I am to explain them and show them to you in, in more detail basically. Uh, these are things that you're gonna have to look out for down the road when you're learning how to rap and practice, uh, just practice in the end, that's all it really is. Uh, guys, don't forget to check out my new website, ckraps.com, for more exclusive videos, discussion board, location board, forum, for you guys to ask me questions, talk amongst each other, and so forth. Uh, I do have very exclusive videos there for uh, learning new techniques and, techniques and things like that with, with this, some disassembly videos as well. So check it out. I'll put a link in the top corner and in the description below for you. Now let's get to it. We're gonna start off with overstretching and I'm gonna show you what that looks like when you overstretch the film. When you overstretch the film, what happens is, is you cause usually distortion in the actual finish or color. Um, this can make a gloss film more matte, it can make a matte film more glossy, or it can just simply change the pigment in all. Uh, I'm gonna use this uh, metallic here. This is a matte metallic film. So matte metallic films are a little bit more vulnerable, vulnerable to showing discoloration uh, when you overstretch them in certain areas. So we're gonna use this. Uh, this is Vivid's right here. And I'm gonna show you what happens when we do it. So I'll bring the camera in. I'm gonna wipe off the panel and give you a nice, close, detailed look at what we're actually doing. First off, we'll wipe off the panel with isopropyl alcohol. So we can just get a nice, bond in the beginning here. I'm going to cut a piece of film and I'm using the hood as an example here simply because uh, it's the front of the hood is usually an area where people do stretch, overstretch too much. I'm going to lower the hood down slightly, give ourselves a better perspective here. Perfect. Now let's put some film down on the hood. Now what happens with the hood usually is we get down to this bottom corner over here in the front and we start getting a lot of bunched up material right around here, depending on how much the hood curves. Let's take this film and show you what happens when we actually overstretch near the end here. And this will be mistake number one. So I'll lay this down right here really nicely. No stretching. Obviously we can see that I'll lay down some of the bottom section here, just so we can see that nothing is being stretched and then we'll stretch it. We'll get onto squeegee pressure after this because you'll see me squeegeeing very nicely like that. That's simply because of my correct pressure. So let's do this. So as we can see, the finish looks great, right? Let's go all the way across here. We're gonna make a line basically from right here because this is where most people would start stretching. So I'll lift the film up to this area and just kind of snap it up quick. We're gonna heat the film. And then stretch it. I'm not pulling it yet. You'll see when I pull it. Right now I'm just warming it up. Hopefully the camera doesn't get in my way when I do this. Let's do it. Let's pull the film tight and get it all glassed out towards the end here. Okay, so I haven't done anything else but heat and stretch. Let's see what happens here. I haven't squeegeed it down yet. Okay, so you can see a line running from here to here now. Now, does this go back to normal? Yes, it does. Let's bring you in a little more. It will go back to normal. You can shrink this back. One of the ways to avoid doing this or causing this to happen is to stretch over a larger area or not stretch directly from this line right here where your film was making contact with the hood. You wanna start a little bit further back right here. So let's shrink this back down and see what happens. When I shrink this back down, I wanna go past the problem area, so I'm a little bit past it. This is gonna help tie things in a little bit better, and it should, it should mostly go back to normal because of the memory in the film. 
Now, that will happen with, it's a lot less likely with a solid gloss color, but it will happen with a solid gloss color as well. Um, something with metallic or pearl in it, again, it's a little bit more likely. So let's just keep it flat and sort of put it back to normal here. Okay, so along that line there, we shouldn't really see, we shouldn't really see anything anymore. Let's just lift that up. Nope, got a wrinkle there, that's okay. I'll just leave that for now. Cool, so I'm gonna look around and I don't see the line anymore. It has now healed and gone away. So again, on my website, I do show how to heat and stretch over a large area to avoid complications that might arise uh, when you're heating and stretching in smaller areas like that. Now, I didn't stretch the film a whole lot. I just stretched it a little bit, maybe a few inches in the beginning there. Nothing crazy, but that can happen. Let's move on to mistake number two. All right, guys, mistake number two, stretching to the edge. Let's do that one. Let's grab a fresh piece. Toss that away. Cut a new piece. It's just a rental car. So this is why I'm using it for a nice demo. Let's grab that new piece of film and see what happens when we stretch to the edge. Okay. So, you know, all fun and games, you know, let's say, let's say we got the film down um, and you know, we're at the edge or we're, we're getting close to the edge or we're able to stretch the film out over a large area, okay? Let's say we're stretching the film out over a large area and we're making it down to the bottom here. But the main problem is stretching towards the edge, okay? And I'm gonna show you what happens. Okay, so let's take the film, let's keep it flat and let's stretch towards the edge here. Okay, so right now, I, I stretched it a lot and I didn't get any kind of line there. So that's showing you that when you heat and stretch over a larger area and not at that line where it was connected, you don't get that line. But on top of that, let's get down here now. Okay, so I heated and pulled the film down to this edge. What's the problem here? The problem here is that we just drew all the tension down to the edge. When we draw the tension to the edge, let's say we cut it off at the bottom here. The film wants to retract this way. If we had avoided that with a 3D stretch or three direction stretch, then the film would want to pull in at the sides and back. But if we can get it to pull at the sides, it will want to curl around the bottom side a little bit more, which helps it. So I just, I just stretched directly to this edge. Let's see what happens when we add heat. Car's running, summertime's coming. Let's bring the camera in actually. I'm gonna put my hand right here just to hopefully allow the camera to focus. I'm trying to burn myself. Let's see what happens. So I can see the film wanting to pull off the edge. Where is she right there? Look, it's trying to crawl back there. See? So depending on how much I stretch, it's gonna keep going. Depending on how much I stretch, the more it will pull back, okay? So we see the results of what's happening here. Now, if we simply just took the film and pulled it across the edge or expanded it outwards across the edge, then it would want to pull itself underneath. Let's just flip All right, so mistake number three. Mistake number three is gonna be not squeegeeing hard enough or not putting enough pressure down on your squeegee. You don't wanna to put too much, definitely don't wanna to put too little. You gotta find a balance there where you're able to force the air out of the film and not leave any behind, basically. You know, what I, what I sometimes say is, we're not petting a kitten. We're, we're trying to lay this sticker down on a car, okay? We wanna make sure that we're being pretty firm with the sticker and its adhesion to the panel itself. So let's take this right now, and I'm gonna show you a result of what happens when we squeegee too light versus when we squeegee more firm. What I notice a lot in my workshops is that people don't put enough pressure, and a lot of people have no experience at all when they're actually doing this, uh, when they're coming to the workshops. They come in, they have zero experience learning how to wrap, basically. They've never done it before. Let's move the camera in. So I'm gonna put this film down on the hood, make it a little more flat. 
And I'm just going to squeegee it as what I see most of my be most beginners squeegee. I'm going to remove the bottle from underneath the hood here, bring this hood down on a better angle. I think that'll work better. Nope. Okay. Okay, so what's important is pressing firmly, thumb in the center, and squeegeeing with firm pressure, okay? Not like brute force pressure, but firm pressure. What I see most people doing in the workshop is this. They take the squeegee and they push really lightly, and I'm pushing really lightly, and what happens is, is they start getting stuck with wrinkles like this, and then they start getting more, and then you're squeegeeing over that, and then you start end up squeegeeing over this, and then you just keep getting more wrinkles and more air bubbles. And look at all the air I'm leaving behind. So we're not, we're not actually getting the film out, the air out. See what's happening here? So if we don't actually add enough heat, or sorry, add enough pressure to the film, we're not even able to get the air out. On top of that, we're getting a lot of wrinkles and creases. Let's bring that in so you can see better. What I'd also like to check here is to see if when I heat the area, if we're getting a lot of air bubbles or not, because I didn't push very hard. So let's see what happens. Okay, so you can see the air bubbles starting to arise because I didn't push the air out of the film. So what can happen, even around here, is getting some air bubbles. The, air is, the, the, the hot air is showing me this because air has moisture in it, right? You end up getting into a lot of trouble when it comes to doing this because then you start getting small air bubbles trapped in all over the middle of the hood or the middle of the panel and it becomes a pain in the butt. On top of that, we got a lot of wrinkles here, okay? There, 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 these are not good. These creases don't always necessarily heat up. These are very hard creases. They're very sharp creases. So we want to make sure that we're putting a good pressure down. Let's see what happens when we put good pressure down on the actual film when we squeegee. Use the exact same spot. There is Technique also involved when you're squeegeeing uh, more than just pressure. It's also reading the film that takes that comes with a bit of experience But I can also teach that All right, so let's see what happens Let's put this down and see what happens when we actually apply decent pressure to the film, okay? That can't be squeegee, so let's lift it up a little bit But you can see that my pressure it's good, and my speed, I can, go, I can go pretty quickly with it. Yeah, I got a couple down there. I'm starting to get bunched up with the film. But we can go pretty quickly when we have good pressure with the squeegee. I got the whole piece down other than that tiny little bit right there, no big deal. Uh, just to show you the difference between squeegeeing firmly and squeegeeing too light. Now let's run the heat gun over it and see if we actually left any air behind also. Well, that's the edge, so I'm gonna squeegee the edge there. Let's check more in the middle. I don't see any tiny air bubbles at all, okay? Nothing in the middle here. Now, you don't want to go too quickly when you squeegee or use the corner, because look what happens. That is not going away. That is a, basically a friction mark in a matte film. You can make these all day long, okay? Even though my squeegee corner is covered, you know, I still have buffer there. It's not, it's not rubbering like that. You can still make marks in it. So that's like a bonus uh, mistake right there. Let's say mistake number six. Uh, try not to press with the corner of the squeegee. That's why I always say you're pushing, put your thumb in the middle when you squeegee and have good pressure. Now let's move on to mistake number four. So mistake number four that most people make is leaving too much film around an edge, for example. Now, I'm gonna show you what it looks like when we leave a little bit of film and when we leave a lot of film. A lot of film is a problem. I'm gonna end up doing this more around the back corner over here, so I'll move the camera in. It's a good example for it because people you tend to get extra film around corners um, as opposed to just trimming it off where they kind of should. So I'm gonna get that wrapped, get the camera in, and I'm gonna show you what happens. All right, so let's do this corner with excess film um, wrapped around it basically and show you what that sort of looks like. What a lot of people end up doing is they don't end up usually pre-stretching the corner enough and then they, they end up just trying to push down a whole bunch of vinyl around the back side of the corner, which doesn't look pretty in the end. Uh, I'm gonna try and lift the hood up a little bit. Let's see if I can get it 
to sit in the spot. That's probably better. Yeah, so what I'm going to show you here is just basically heating and pushing the film around. This is the one mistake a lot of, of beginners make right here. And then on top of that, they usually leave too much, you guys would leave, not you guys, but beginners in general usually leave too much film around the bottom side. Okay, so we'll do that. And then what happens here is the trimming, you guys are normally afraid to leave more, more vinyl around the bottom side, so you'll end up trimming a little bit lower here. And it doesn't look as nice as it could if you just cut it flush. Okay, so something to show you here is what I did versus like what you guys would normally do or beginners would normally do versus what I'll, what I'll do in the end here. So let's heat this up again. And then you end up getting extra vinyl hanging down around because it's folding underneath, right? So what happens here is, is on this very corner right here, right there, it ends up folding and not sticking to the underside of the actual panel anymore. So it kind of hangs down, doesn't look pretty, not to mention we have wrinkles on the corner. So that doesn't look good either. I'll bring you in a little bit. Right, so when you guys do corners and things like that, you want to make sure that you're not leaving all this extra material around the back end of things. Sorry about the camera moving here. See what that looks like? Doesn't look very good. Even if I just trim this off right now, it will look a lot better. So it's not like it's the end of the world because you didn't um, get the corner down nicely. As long as you don't leave too much vinyl, it will look a lot better. So already, it looks tremendously better than it just did. A little bit of heat and stuff like that, you can massage it down. Now, if you really want to make it nice, you take it and you trim it off on the bottom side. So let's do the same, let's do the corner again. This time I'm gonna do it the way I normally do it. Which is just add a, I just add a kiss of heat right here, soften the film up, and stretch it outwards a bit. Get it to hug around. Now what I'll do is make sure nothing's tacked onto any other edges here. Heat and shrink the film. And then trim out the excess. The corner itself uh, does come down slightly around here. Uh, your, there's a difference between European and Japanese cars. European cars tend to have thicker metal, so it tends to be a little more tricky to do some cars, certain like Mercedes and stuff like that. Their corner is a little bit more difficult. Trying to get in your way here. Now again, do we have to worry about the film pulling up and lifting? Well, no, I heated it, I shrunk it, I made sure that it wasn't gonna go anywhere. So this is what it'll look like when you don't leave too much film. Let's get a little bit of heat, just so you can see it's not moving anywhere, not pulling off that corner. And let's bring the camera in. All right, so I hope you guys can see it more here. It's a bit hard to get the angle in the light. So it looks a lot nicer, a lot cleaner, a lot less film kicking around that edge. Just makes it look better. All right, last but not least, mistake number five. Uh, basically, heating and stretching in certain directions, okay? You wanna make sure that your hand placement is in the right place, okay? Most people cut too much film, let's say for a mirror, and then have this huge chunk of vinyl for the mirror, and you're not able to get your hands where you need them to be. So I'm gonna show you what the mistake is that most people make versus how I actually do it. Here's our mirror. Our mirror, this is actually a very complex mirror to wrap in one piece. It's a little bit difficult. It's not the easiest. But our mirror piece and shape and size is very important, okay? If we have this massive piece, I'm going to cut one out right now. I'm not even going to cut it that excessive. I've seen some people go even more crazy than this. So let's do it. So we're gonna, I'm just going to kind of look at this, okay? I'm going to cut like a whole bunch of this right here. Cut a bunch of that off. And then... Try to wrap this thing. What happens is we're not able to get our hands close enough into position where we need them because what we end up doing is we end up grabbing an area that doesn't make any sense like right back here. So just for example, I'm gonna I'll try and get this done really quick so I can get onto the part of how to do it right. Okay. 
But I'm going to show you the mistake that you guys often make, or beginners often make, versus the way that you should probably do it. So I'm doing this so I can basically, I'm basically kind of pre-stretching the film around the backside over here so it hugs. And then we're going to shrink down the backside. Make sure that stays down all nice and tight. Okay, so now you have this, you have this piece right here, which is enough to wrap your mirror. It's definitely enough. We've got my, the mirror ends right here and my hand is all, so the mirror ends like right, right here and my hand is, can come all the way back here. So that's pretty far past the mirror. Um, if, we're, if we're heating and stretching out here, we're gonna have problems being able to stretch the film out properly, okay? But let's try it. I'm definitely gonna distort this finish, but I'm, that's not my goal right now is to maintain it. It's just to actually show you what happens when you can't put your hands in the right place. And it's hard for me to do this. So what you guys will end up usually doing is pulling from way back here, and then you get a lot of wrinkles. See all the wrinkles? And you're not able to actually stretch those wrinkles out, okay? It's really, really hard to do if your hands are all the way out here when you're pulling across a panel, basically, any kind of panel for the most part. Um, this goes with bumpers, goes for mirrors, uh, fenders, mainly those areas there. Uh, you wanna have your hands sort of over top of the situation. Now I'm gonna show you what happens when you actually have your hands in the right place. This piece right here is more of the size piece that you need. So let's just remove this one, show you the size difference here, okay? This is more along the size that we need. So I've got an extra like six, seven inches at least. I mean, this is stretched a little bit, but you know, six, seven inches at least once you shrink it back down. Um, you know, extra on the top, extra on the bottom, just too much. So this right here is more along the lines of the piece that you need. I'll try and set myself up the same way, but you're gonna see what happens when I actually have the right size piece and where my hands are gonna to wanna to be positioned. So see, now, now I'm forced to grab it more at the end of the mirror uh, because I can't grab it all the way back here because there is an extra film. So I'm, I'm forced to put my hands more over top of the mirror. So again, let's get this set up. Like even when I'm pushing right there with my fingers and my, like my thumbs and stuff, I have them mounted over top so I can spread the wrinkles out. Okay, so let's see what happens now when we heat and stretch. We're starting from close to the same place, um, nothing, not too far away. I'm just gonna heat the film and let it shrink down around the back a little bit so it stays anchored. Now let's heat it and you're gonna see where I'm forced to grab the film. But on top of that, our hand placement should go on the top and bottom. Our hand placement should go here and here. Okay, look what happens, I can pull it apart. Not here, what happens when I pull here? We get a lot of wrinkles, we're not able to pull it apart, it's impossible. So hands over top is definitely more beneficial. You're gonna see. I'm sure I'll just start to finish here too. But again, I'm not trying to make it pretty or fancy, I'm just gonna show you what happens when your hand placement is correct versus when it's not. So shrink that back down. Yeah. So again, I'm not, and, and with a smaller piece, we don't have to sit here and heat it for so long. So I'll put my hands over top and bottom, pull it apart, stretch it, and down we go, okay? The mirror is done in like one shot because we're able to actually just put our hands over top of it and spread, it, and spread the wrinkles apart. Look how many less wrinkles there are. Hand placement is very, very important. All right, guys, and that sums it up for the mistakes that most beginners make. Five mistakes, I actually threw a sixth one in there for you. Uh, mistakes that most beginners make when they're starting out. If you don't try to adapt or learn from these mistakes, you're gonna keep making them. So try to get a good feel for you know, what the film is doing, how it's responding to the actions and the heat and the tension, and everything that you're giving it. Pay attention to what's happening. By paying attention, you're actually gonna be able to figure out with hopefully help from these videos here on how to go about, on how to go about wrapping uh, your car, 
uh, other things like maybe a goalie mask, which I just did, uh, tables, I mean anything for example. You know, it doesn't have to be always a compound curve. It can be a flat panel. It could be anything at all. Uh, guys, I hope the video was informative and helpful. Again, don't forget to check out my new website, ckwraps.com. Thank you for watching very much. I appreciate it. Take care.